In our next example on how to add vectors, we're actually going to find what we call the net force on an object when two forces are acting upon it. Force 1 is pulling uh, at a, in a direction 30 degrees uh, above the horizontal with a force of 6 newtons. Force 2 is pulling on the object 60 degrees below the horizontal uh, in this direction with a force of 7 newtons. So what would be the net force acting on that object? That's the same thing as asking what is F1 plus F2. So before we can add the vectors together, we have to find the x and y components of each vector. So let's go ahead and do that. And usually we can do that by drawing a triangle, like so. And then this becomes F1 in the x direction, and this becomes F1 in the y direction. In other words, the x and y components of F1. Same over here. I can draw a triangle this way. And you can see that this would be the x component, f of the second vector, and this would be the y component of the second vector. Notice that the y component of the second vector is pointing downward, so that would be in a negative direction. The magnitude of the y component is a positive number because the magnitude of any vector is always positive, but it's pointing in the negative direction. So when we add the y components together, we'll have to subtract this component from this component, at least the magnitude of that component. All right, let's go ahead and find the x and y components of each vector. So for f1x, f1x, that is equal to f1 times the cosine of theta1, because it's adjacent to that angle. So this would be equal to 6 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees. f1y is equal to f1 times the sine of theta1, which is 6 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees. Of course, we know that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half, so that makes this 3.00 newtons. I'm just going to keep three significant figures because I think the other component will not be a nice round number like that. So we have 30, take the cosine of that, and multiply it times 6, and I get 5.17 newtons. At least now I have found the magnitudes of the, the x and y components of force 1. I'll do the same for force 2. So we have f2 in the x direction is equal to, that would be the magnitude, that would be f2 times the cosine of 60 degrees because that's adjacent to the angle. And, uh, or I'll do it in a more general sense, that would be cosine of theta 2. I like to keep everything in a general sense first before I plug in the numbers. And then f2y is equal to f2 times the sine of theta 2. Notice I didn't put a negative in there because I'm simply looking for the magnitude of the vector, the magnitude of the y component of f2, and that's always going to be a positive number, regardless what the direction of the vector is. So this is equal to f2, which is 7 newtons, times the cosine of 60 degrees. Now, of course, the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, so that would be equal to 3.50 newtons. And here, this is equal to 7 newtons times the sine of 60 degrees. So we take 60, take the sine of that, times 7 equals, and that would be 6.06 .06 newtons. Now I'm ready to add those together. Now, be careful, when we add vectors together or when we add components together, you do have to take into account what direction they're pointing. And I forgot the arrow here, so let me put the arrow here for the y component of vector 2. So let's go ahead and add our components together. So we know that um, the sum of the two, the resultant, the resultant vector is equal to the sum of f1 plus f2, which is equal to, well, f1 has an x and a y component, so it would be 5.17 newtons in the x direction plus 3.00 newtons in the y direction. Notice that's the magnitude of the x component and the magnitude of the y component, so that's vector f1. And we're going to add to that vector 2. Now since I have this in vector notation, I do have to take into account that this is pointing in a negative direction, so this is going to be equal to, oh, and notice that f2x the x component is in a negative direction as well, so it's going to be plus a minus 3.50 newtons in the x direction, minus 6.06 .06 newtons in the y direction. Just notice, both components 
for vector 2 are pointing in a negative direction, that's a negative x direction, the negative y direction, so when I add the two vectors together, I have to put a negative sign in front of each one of those. Notice it's not the magnitude now, it's also the magnitude n direction. So, adding those together, I get the resultant, which is equal to the sum of the two, is equal to 5.17 minus 3.5, now that would be 1.67 newtons, in the x direction and then 3 newtons minus 6.06 .06, that would be minus 3.06 newtons in the y direction so this here is the resultant force or it can also be considered as the net force on the object so notice when they ask for net force they're really asking for the resultant the sum of the two forces now if I were to draw that you can see that uh, that would be 1.6 um, newtons in the x direction, so from there we'll be out this way, and, a, and a negative here, so it looks like this here would be my resultant vector. All right, that's how you do that. That's how you add two force vectors together and get a numerical answer.